What's up everyone, it's your boy Nick and welcome back to another episode. So today we're going to be showing you how we put in this feature wall in our master bedroom. So if that interests you, follow along this video. Yeah! Okay, so for those of you who've been watching some of our recent videos, we'll know that we are currently renovating our home. And we just finished renovating the two smaller bedrooms and now we're working on the master bedroom. So in the two smaller completed bedrooms, we have done a feature wall in either of those rooms. And we did the shiplap one and we did like, a, like the square, like, I don't know what you call that one. So in here, we're gonna make it a little bit different and we're gonna go with more of like a, a geometric style. So far, I've kind of penciled out the rough outline of the pattern that I want to create here. And it's a very, I don't know if you can really see it on the camera, you'll be able to see it in just a second, but it's a very familiar pattern to this house because if you've seen one of my OG videos, especially the Kitchen Island video, you'll notice that this is the pattern that we did on the back of the Kitchen Island. Roll to that clip. Yo, what's up everyone? It's your boy Nick here from Rad Dad Builds. So, in this video, I wanted to show you exactly how I built this modern kitchen island with a custom back panel and a white oak countertop. And I must say, it turned out rad, so you're gonna to wanna to stick around for this one. And as always, roll that intro. Okay, so now that I have a design that I'm happy with, and it's, it's drawn out in pencil, so what, before I paint over those lines and for them to never be seen again, I'm gonna actually mark them out with a permanent marker because I'm gonna paint the wall with the final color that I want it to be and I don't wanna scuff it up, scratch it up, make more marks on top. So I'm hoping the permanent marker will penetrate through. That way I can see where I gotta lay my planks. So let's, uh, I gotta go find a permanent marker and let's get that on the wall. Yeah. been marked out with permanent marker. I'm hoping that's gonna shine through the paint so I can see the lines when I attach my boards. So up next is to paint, but I don't know. I suck at paint and no one really wants to watch that, so. What? Nice. Nice, that's how it's done. What the hell are you doing here? <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay, so now that the final paint color has dried and I've kind of gone over the marks again because I could just about see them, but I couldn't see them clearly, so I went over them just so we can definitely see them. It's now time to, uh, I think, set up the saw and then uh, let's go and see what kind of lumber we got to make these little trim pieces. So, yeah. Okay, so for the pieces of the trim that we're gonna stick on the wall, we're gonna be using a one by two primed MDF. And the reason why we have the one by two primed MDF is because one, I like the size of it, it's nice and skinny. Two, it's already cut and it's already had the chamfer on the edges and it's real smooth. And three, it already comes primed, so you save a lot of the time in the, in the painting stages. So um, yeah, let's go get, get them stuck on the wall. So I think I'm gonna start my first cut or my first piece along this longest line here. And I know I drew this line 45 degrees off the baseboard. So I got to cut a 45 degree angle down this, down this end. And I also got to cut a 45 degree angle at the top end because this is a little bit longer than eight feet. I have eight foot length pieces of trim and I want to continue it to the ceiling. So um, it's just a good way of mitering it and continue it. So let's go ahead and get the first one in and then we can kind of work off the rest of them after that. So to attach the trim to the wall, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a small bead of the construction adhesive, or in my case, no more nails, on the back edge of the piece, and then temporarily just pin it to the wall until the glue dries. And so on the long lens, I'm gonna use my straight edge and just kind of rest it on there and push the trim piece to the straight edge. So that way I know that this piece is gonna be dead straight. 
I'm using an old spirit level, but anything straight would work. And when you're attaching the piece to the wall with pins or whatever you're using, ideally you want to hit a stud, but if not, you want to make sure you're definitely not going to be in line with any electrical cables or any plumbing. But um, I'm just going to tack it into the drywall for now because the glue itself is strong enough to hold the pieces to the wall, especially once it's all painted in and caulked in, this stuff ain't going nowhere. Okay, so for the remainder of this piece going up to the sea then, because there's so many angles here involved, it's kind of hard to just measure that. So what I've done is I've cut a 45 on a piece um, to match the bottom, because that's going to be what that angle to the ceiling is. And I'm just going to hold it up um, flush with the piece that I've already stuck on until, and push it up until it butts up to the ceiling there. And then simply just mark my angle on here. Along. And then cut that, and then that should be that. All the pieces are secure, attached to the wall, they're not going anywhere. And I just want to say how easy this wall was to do. Like every cut was either a 45 degree angle, like these ones and the ones on the edges, or a 90 degree. So you could always do this without a minor saw. I have a minor saw, so I'm going to use it, but it is a very, very, uh, it is a very DIY friendly uh, feature wall to do. So all that's really left is to fill all the pinholes, caulk between the trim and the wall just to hide that seam and paint. But paint really isn't fun to watch, so we're going to go and skip ahead to tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, so it's the next day, the paint has dried, and I'm pretty, I'm pretty impressed how it turned out, and I'm really happy, especially considering how easy it was to do. Okay, so the only thing that I possibly might change is the color of the outlets. I think the white is a bit too, kind of, it stands out too much. If I can get, like, if I can get the color match, that'd be awesome, I don't know if you can. Or get, like, even just, like, a black outlet would look, uh, I think it would look a little better. But that's, that's done, that's, that's done another time, so. Um, other than that, yeah, I'm pretty happy how this feature will turn out. And that's pretty much a wrap on this video. Considering how easy this feature wall was to create, I'm super impressed on how it's transformed this space. This room looks so much nicer than it did before. If you got any comments or questions, don't hesitate to ask me down below. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing, that'd be awesome. If you want to go see some more day-to-day -day stuff, go follow me at raddadbuilds on Instagram. If you like home improvement, woodwork, DIY, and all kind of rad stuff, go see some of my other videos. going to be floating around here in just a second. And as always, we'll see you in the next video. Yeah. Bye.